I'm going to get the recording started. Alrighty. <clears throat> Thank you everybody for joining us today. We have Diana here to talk to us about Scribafile and what it is, why you should use it and why, how she has used it for the last couple of years. I think you've been using it longer than when Three. we first, when we first met at the uh, Monroe writers group. So yeah, you, you were talking about it back then. Awesome. So um, I'll hand it over and thank you very much. Okay, Diana. absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, I have 15 slides only, which we'll go through. And then the rest of the time, I think I'll just bring up my account and click around and kind of kind of show you how it goes. I think that might be might be um, useful. So at the first the bottom of the first slide, this is the website that one can go to to check it out. And essentially, Scribafile is a way in which you can get your work looked at by other writers. And the system that they use is called Karma, Karma Points. So you critique someone else's work, and in turn, you earn enough points that you can post your own and, and get critiques. Um, and it's a little bit of a of a slow thing to start because no one knows you knows your work etc but with a little bit of time and it took about three four months for me um to build up a a crew but with time if you're the kind who who um can can network on there you can get um a very multifaceted, powerful team i kind of think of it as a bunch of mats and Tonys in my pocket. You know, these are folks who can be the same level of helpful and gung ho as you guys and Susan and Linda as far as getting things done. So I've been very, very pleased with it. And I like how it's the way I use it has been one stop uh, shopping. So the things that you can get out of Scribafile are the networking that I'm talking about and specifically. I have used it for alpha and beta reads both. And my usual habit is to put up an early draft, get critiques on it, and then revise and put up a new and improved version and get critiques on that. And after that, it doesn't take much before it's ready to, to publish. It's possible to collect a crew of experts in certain um, areas. And so for my thriller, I was able to get black and Muslim and bisexual um, readers um, who could comment on those aspects of, of the characters. Um, my my uh, novel about the deaf archaeologist um, was vastly improved because I was able to get a deaf woman to critique the whole thing. Um, and I just found her by searching a deaf group and emailing her cold to say, golly gee, you know, would you mind doing this and, and, and doing a swap? It's helpful sometimes um, for those who have nobody or only the people who think that being a writer is essentially the same as gaming all day and night. Um, it's sometimes nice to have other people um, for whom this is normal, this, this passion. Um, and it can be very helpful for brainstorming and collaborate, collaboration if someone is stuck on a plot point or, or wants to explore certain things. It's good for really early writers as well because um, you can learn a huge amount just by doing critiques. What you don't like and, and uh, what you think is a, a cool way of doing things. And of course, when you get critiques, teaches you um, not only to be less fussy, uh, you get a thicker skin pretty fast, even though generally the people there are very nice, um, but it also helps teach you to trust your own intuition. And I think that has been very helpful, especially back when I was a new writer. You know, I think there tends to be a lot of self-doubt and the feeling that other people know better than you. And, and with time, um, reading other critiques of your work can can really help in that um, manner too. There are 
contests that happen all the time, whether those are big deal contests or quickie little things like prompts. And that's really good um, for me um, to stop the tendency to say, oh, boo hoo, the phase of the moon isn't right. You know, I'm not feeling it. You know, if you if you have a certain period of time to do a little mini contest, it, it's really terrific to teach you to sit down and write something and post something instead of dithering and polishing endlessly. So it, it, it makes you stronger in that regard. There's a possibility for um, leadership uh, in running groups or running contests as well. Um, and you can get stuff. I have won $75 in cash uh, for one of the contests there and uh, uh, loot as well. I have used it as a marketing team for ARC readers and some swaps in addition. So it's kind of a thing that you can use it. Uh, you can tailor it to what you want as an author. And so I really like that flexibility. Some people just use it to connect pe to pe with, uh, with people and, and use it as a social site. And it works for that as well. Here is a copy of my loot from winning a contest uh, last year. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Diana. Tony had a quick question. Um, to actually, two things. Would you be able yeah. to make this full screen? Christine would like to know if you can make it full screen. Uh, I think I can. Let's see. I think it's the little TV stand one down there at the bottom. I don't see it at the bottom. Bottom right oh, looks like a little yeah, TV yeah. stand. That guy. Okay, okay, well, there you go. And um, then, so, yeah, there you and go. Then, and then Tony had a question. Um, are these people reading your entire book? Every single time, or are they reading well, portions of it? Well, it depends how you do it. And I'll talk, I am very much a read my whole thing or don't waste my time kind of person now, um, except for short work. And there's ways to make that happen if that's what you're interested in. I'm predominantly a novelist, and so that's what was um, most important to me. So I'll, I'll kind of let, kind of show you the way you can do to encourage that. Um, one other benefit from it is some collaborations. I knew a guy who critiqued my work and vice versa. He also was doing podcasts and his vocal person had bailed. And so he had no one to voice his uh, part. And so I volunteered and said, well, you know, I've never done this, but what the hell? And um, so then Santa got me a mic for Christmas and I did it and it was fun and it wasn't that hard. And now I'm doing audiobooks. And so you don't know what might come out of it. Um, the work is stored indefinitely if you have premium and they caution you that you're not supposed to use it as your primary storage site. But the truth is it's kind of nice to know that it is a possibility to have that. There are people who do illustration and editing on the side. And I've thought about that. Um, and certainly my daughter is uh, interested in doing that. And it's, it's possible to really get to know people well when you do multi-book critiques over time. And, and so you end up getting some, some actual uh, real friends, even <laughs> though you may never have met them. So that's kind of fun. And um, I, I queried Scribafile when the talk was coming up to ask about, you know, weird, unusual benefits. And, and there were three or four people who had actually met on Scribafile and gotten married. So I thought that was fun. So um, I won one contest and I got this huge big box of chocolate all the way from New Zealand. It cost her a hundred bucks to send it. And she threw in a can of Vegemite just to repel me. But it it's just kind of a fun illustration of the kind of exposures that one would never have gotten otherwise to Jaffa's, which are nasty. Um, or these, which are actually pretty good. So on Scribafile, there are basically several different kinds of people who, who use it. And I am this worker bee person. It is a tool for me, um, but it's one of the best tools in my box. And so what I do is I post a draft, I revise it as critiques come in, I post um, a revision, I revise that, and then it's ready to publish. There are people who work very slowly 
and they just enjoy reading other work and they occasionally post things. Um, and those folks might do really well with um, a basic membership without the uh, bells and whistles. It's a good place for social butterflies, frankly. There's all kinds of stuff that's posted on the forums. And if, if you let it happen, you could easily get sucked in all day because there's posts about all kinds of pop culture and writing questions and all manner of things. And then uh, there's a few bad actors in there. There's a few people who um, try to um, buddy up to the people who have hot avatars, even though, of course, there's no guarantee that the young hot redhead isn't some old guy. Um, and there's a few people who, who uh, join and then flame out in spectacular uh, fashion but but these are rare and and it's easy to learn to avoid them so scribble file comes in two different flavors and the free one is basic and you can post two works at a time but if you were going to do a whole novel you would have to post two chapters and then delete those two and then post the next two and so it's kind of a stop and start thing. And I have tried to cultivate the kind of critiquers who are going to rampage through my whole novel in pretty short order. And so this doesn't work for me. It also limits messaging and certain other things. But it's free. And this is not bad um, if someone wanted just to try it and, and play around and see. So this is a good way to start. And people can upgrade at any given time. Premium is cheap. To me, it's cheap. Um, you earn karma points by, by doing critiquing, and you have unlimited private messages. And that's valuable to me because I have a handful of maybe five or six people that I've critiqued many of their novels and vice versa. And we kick around plot and all kinds of things, arrange uh, swaps and whatnot. And so I have threads going back for three years with those people. So it's nice not to have that unlimited um, uh, messaging. You have more control of who gets to see your um, writing and you get to publish your your publications, et cetera. Um, some of these things I don't know, I, I've never used and don't care about like putting pictures in the work and and those sorts of things. Beta Spotlight though is handy. If someone wants to get a whole novel done, but they don't want to spend the time to do critiques and earn karma, then you can put your whole novel in a beta spotlight um, for free. No one earns karma critiquing your chapter that way. So they don't have a high incentive to do that, but people do beta swaps all the time. So that works well. And you get a little bit of freebies um, if you wanted to do Grammarly. And, and the, the freebie discounts, the freebies or discounts you get very year to year. It was a discount on Scrivener when I joined. Um, so, but this is, this is what it is now. The truth is for me, the way that it works on the critiquers I have, this takes the place of Grammarly. It takes the place of pro writing aid. So I, I very much feel like I get my uh, money's worth on this. The most important things for me on premium is the ability to use the beta spotlight, the ability to start a critique and then finish it later, and the ability to restrict my work and the messaging. Those are the big things right there, as well as being able to post an entire novel at once. This is just an example. This is my new horror story, and I posted it on the 6th at night. And within very few days, I had 75 different people read it and uh, a fair number of critiques. And I'll show you the new uh, stats on that particular thing when we when we poke through the site live. But once you have a, a bunch of folks, it's really a nice, fast way to get some feedback, which I like, without having to go hat in hand to people and twist their arm um, uh, to read my work. This is my new uh, novel, the one that's going to be published in November. And you can see this is the day I posted it. And I had 30-something views that first day. 
I've had 460 views total and 25 different people have gone through it in this time frame. So it's a really powerful um, way to get eyes on work and fast. It is possible in any social site to run afoul of certain unwritten rules. And there aren't very many of them, and most of them are common sense, but everybody is there to get their work read. And so it's poor form to beg in the forums and whine about how karma poor you are and want people to give you them. If people critique your work, it's good form to click all the buttons which are insightful, helpful, thoughtful, blah, blah. If you don't click them, then some people will decide you're a fussy twit and never critique your work again. And so I would definitely um, click all the buttons no matter what, even for a tepid crit, and then use your response to the crit otherwise to encourage or discourage that particular critiquer um, from there on. It's bad form to spend two days on the site and then decide that you single-handedly know the way that it should run. Same for spending two days on site and telling everyone else a bunch of writing rules, which they of course have heard six zillion times. When in doubt, you can message people and then the, the private messages and the scratch pad are, are the best as well as return critiques of the way uh, to slowly gather one's posse and favorite critiquers. There are certain tricks one can do uh, early on if, if earning karma seems too daunting. Um, works can either be in spotlight for full karma or out of spotlight, in which case you only earn half. And so to make, if you, if you read a, if you see a story you want to read, you, you may have to, if it's in a personal spotlight, you may have to favorite that author or join their groups to get full karma. If it has a yellow sun and I'll, sh we'll walk through this. It'll make more sense. If it has a yellow sun, it may still be in spotlight, but if it's a beta spotlight, you don't get Jack for that. So double check that. If you're in premium, and there's a story you want to read, but it's going out of spot, like there's maybe one spot left. You can start a crit just by throwing down one word and saving it. And then even if it goes back out of spotlight, you can lock in full karma for that chapter and then go back later and do it. And I do a lot of those. I can tell you, you can have as many as 17 snags and saves open at once. Um, you can win a lot in contests. It's very easy to pick up one or three karma here and there in these two groups in particular. Um, my first three or four months, I won 30 karma points here, there, and everywhere. Um, so that can add up and, and really help when you're first uh, starting. Once a year, they have this big cage match for the ultimate writer, and that has a lot of karma involved with that one. There are some people who organize um, with their buddies to click each other's um, critiques as they come across them. It's, it's a piddly amount of karma that actually happens with that. But um, if a bunch of people do it, it ends up being uh, a, sig a significant amount over multiple models. Um, and then the other thing that one can do is tr try to strategically um, complete several crits in in one day and that increases the chance of adding or of landing in the good critiquer spotlight which is a freebie um, and I'll show you how that works as well so here in a minute we'll go to actually walking through the site but basically scrib is ideal for people who want fast honest feedback people who live far away and maybe don't want to run into a writer's group um, or the writer's groups are social but nothing really happens or they're so infrequent that it'll take half a year to critique a whole novel. Um, it's great for people who want uh, viewpoints of multiple kinds of people um, and it, it really brings a lot to the table. You don't need a developmental editor if you have script people reading your whole novel you don't need um, these other kinds of programs um, uh, I have found 
it's great if people are willing to do the networking and that means critiquing a bunch of uh, work. And it's really great for new writers because it has been hands down the best thing to take me from um, a reasonable writer to a much, much, much better writer. Um, so so those, those are tremendous benefits from, for, for Scribble Lab. It doesn't work if someone has no time at all because you no one no one knows you. You don't have time to critique back, which is partly how the networks form. Um, so for people like that, it just may not be ideal. If there's somebody who is uh, laboriously slow at reading, then um, it's going to be hard to critique enough to bank karma to post. People who write so slowly that they only have something to post every six months, then it probably hardly matters um, whether they go on Scrib or or some other networking group. And it's it's not good for thin-skinned people. Most people are not mean, but the rules of the critiquing are that they have to be legitimate suggestions, which means that that they're not just raw, raw, aren't you great type of Critiques. And so that can be kind of hard, I think, for some early authors um, to, to get that sort of thing. So we'll go through this um, in a moment, but this is just in case someone wants to double back and, and read the, the slides instead of uh, going through the whole talk. So now let's see. So now let's actually go on Scribify. Are you guys there? Hello? Uh, uh, yes, we are. Can you, can you see this thing that says Scribify? Yes, we can. Um, I had a quick question, Diana. Yeah. Um, somebody yeah. start starting out with this and you know it's new, it's you know, it's something new for somebody to work on and, and learn. How much time would you in, you know tell somebody to invest in order to build up a decent following and get the interactions that you get. Maybe not okay. to your level, but like where should somebody start and what, what, what is the expectation? Because you, you are being required to read on, stuff. It depends on time. It depends on time. Um, it took me about three months before I had a solid group who looked for my stuff, jumped right in, et cetera. But that, that came from doing about three critiques a day and that was not hard for me because, you know, each chapter is supposed, each whatever you're critiquing is supposed to be 3,000 words or less. And so I read really fast. And, um, you know, th this was not that hard for me. And I just made it part of my morning stretches, if you will, um, because I learn a lot from doing it. So it kind of gets me in the mood just do three critiques and I don't do them all at once, but I do one here and then another there, but about two or three a day, um, you, you read some things that are sad and, and you encourage that author and that, but you don't really want them as your long-term buddy. Um, but you read some things that are fantastic and, and a percentage of people whom you critique will critique your work back and you can gain a lot from that. And then you thank them nicely, et cetera. So, it, it took me about three months to get my posse and it's, it's, it's going really well, actually. So it's not that much time, but it can be really discouraging and overwhelming at first because there's a huge amount that the site brings. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay. All right. So this is the home screen on Scribify. And this, what's new is part of what we call the feed. And so you can see if people wrote on your scratch pads to find that I would click here. You can see who, this is one of my buddies. So I can see that she has critiqued this. Um, this is a story from my Australian buddy. Um, someone else has critiqued it. Um, someone else has added me to a favorite, this kind of stuff. Um, this, tab is how you get when you first start out to see what things there are so if we look in the main spotlight you can see here's 3700 
literary fiction chapter six, this is the way you don't do it to me because this person is going to get a bunch of drive-bys, this one chapter in isolation, and a lot of their critiques are going to be, who's this? I don't understand this. Why would he react that way? And they wouldn't be questions had they followed all along, um, but to each his own. So a lot of them are, are things like that. This is a horror story, 2,900 words, horror adult. That looks like fun. If you think, well, maybe let's look at it. And if it looks good, you can, you can say, aha, three critiques. That means I have a little bit of time. I'll put a reading reminder and go back to it. If it was on its last critique or there were seven people wanting to read it, you might want to get that done fast. So now we flag this and I'll go back and look at it because I love horror in the fall and it might be a thing I want to look at. Um, so these are all main spotlights. A new member doesn't have to wait. Things in the main spotlight, you have to wait your turn. And that's one other thing about premium is you get the use of personal spotlights. These people in main get three critiques for their five karma and they have to wait to get the spotlight. If you're in personal spotlight, you can get six critiques for the same karma and you don't have to wait at all. So I always post my whole model, bam, 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 all at once. Um, but until you have a network, no one's going to see it. It doesn't have the visibility of main spotlight. New members, though, they give a boost to get um, their first story in right away. Here is this thing called the good critiquer spotlight. And the good person, good critter spotlight is whoever did the most critiques the previous day end up in the spotlight. And so even if even if work is past the the number of critiques it was supposed to get, it'll be fluffed up for full karma um, for 24 hours. So here is my current ghost story um, in the good critiquer spotlight, and I have 27 critiques for my entry fee, because it's been in the Good Critiquer Spotlight multiple times. Some of them are darn good and some are not that uh, great, but you know, 27 critiques for Five Karma is pretty darn good. Um, so, so you can also search by short work and what sort of thing you want to look at as well in the writing tab. So this is where when you first join, you go to find stuff to read. The author tab isn't that useful, actually, but it does show the most recent publications from people. It shows who was the active critiquers yesterday. See, there I am. That's me on Scribblefile. Um, it shows who's new. And some people do this to try to get their posse. They will message every one of these new kids and say, hey, welcome to Scribble File. And that, that can work. They have best critiquers in the last week. I don't know how, what good that is. And then they have best critiquers of all time. And this is a popularity contest, okay? Um, this British chick has over 3 million words of critique. I have two something million. This person has 800,000. But this is whoever clicks the critiques most gets in that spotlight. I'm, again, I'm not sure what that is useful for, nor this either. This is the people whose posts get the most clicks. So these are forum hounds who spend a huge amount of time starting and clicking and following um, forum posts. So these are the, the social butterflies folks, and these are the people who are here to critique and and uh, learn. So that's the author's tabs. Groups, there are groups for everything, and you can browse um, by active group, type of group, etc. Um, the forums are places where you can ask specific questions about writing, about publishing. Um, new member introductions you can chat about books you're reading kind of a book club sort of thing and people are very active about that people can ask questions about the site itself and some of these the 
this stuff is just games and whatnot. But this can be very helpful as well. Um, and, and it's searchable. So um, let's just look at some things here. So I just typed in Balrog and bam, you can see the limerick I wrote for this from three years ago. Um, this was just a stupid little game, but you know the search function is pretty robust on here and valuable. I, I did um, a question about uh, attitudes towards smoking in characters who smoke and that was that was useful. So so the forums can be powerful to get feedback about certain tropes or certain things as well. Um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on the forums. The forums uh, are moderated and if you're too rude or too obnoxious, you can get thrown off. Um, and pretty much a lot of the topics do degenerate into kind of a flame fest. And some people go just to watch that, but but it's it's not my thing. Contests are where you can earn money. So this is the humor group's current contest. You've got 27 days left and you can win money and glory um, uh, for doing this. And you can run a contest too. I did a, when the pandemic first hit, I did a contest called Writing in Exile. Um, that was, it, it's a little work to run a contest, but if you run one successfully offering karma, the next contest you do, Scrib will cash, will cough up this money. They're the ones who front that. So that's kind of very neat um, and a good thing for confidence for, for writers. Um, the Academy tab is great for new writers. It has things on, you know, what a comma splice is and, um, and, uh, things like that. So that's kind of a useful thing for, uh, for some people. Um, let's see. The homepage also shows what critiques you have in the works. So you can go back to them. And it has reading reminders, things you want to um, read next. So this one and this one is a novel swap I'm doing with these guys. And this one too. Um, this one also, but she, hers is down for editing. She only has two. So I'm waiting for that one. So, um, the ones that have the moon are going out of spotlight. So if I do this particular novel, this one, I wouldn't get full karma. I'd only get half karma. This one, I would in theory get half karma, but this person has set so that you can earn a little extra karma points. So that helps make up for the, the work that's out of spotlight. If I get around to this, I'll critique it, but I'll have 18 days only until it locks. So it's, it's I kind of sometimes will save things because I love to have something to read every day. And um, that way, if my buddies aren't having anything new, then I still have something I can go to. So that's, that's the home page. The little avatar page, if you click that, that shows your profile. And you can change your avatar. This is a tattoo of Mojo, uh, the military dog in my current uh, story for, for Sierra's collaboration. And so this is a public space. So anyone who searches me here can see that I have this many points, that I have done this many critiques, this blah, blah. They can check me on Twitter and they can see who favorites me and who I favor. And this you have to take with a grain of salt. Some some people have undoubtedly favored me only so they could read my work um, and then people forget. So I'm not sure that 276 people really, really love me, but I can tell you that about 30 or 40 do. And that's, that's what you need. Um, you can look at uh, a person's groups and some are horror, some are brainstorming. Some of these are private groups to post things in. Some of these are, here's one that I have that I just use if there's certain contests to invite the, con the collaboration of the other contestants. And then I just empty the hangout 
out after I'm done with each. So there's all kinds of different groups um, that a person can join. Um, and you can put as much or as little here as you wish. I have my website. It shows my publications, including best laid plans. The scratch pad is a place where people can leave notes which are out in public. And so this, this person doesn't have premium, so they have to split their messages in a series of, of uh, public notes like this. Um, the basic is just thank you for a critique if someone does it. If you just say thanks for the critique, that's kind of tepid and not highly encouraging. If someone says, oh, my God, you're so fantastic. You're going to be more likely to go back because uh, you feel like they valued your work. Um, and private messages are, are even better as far as that goes. There is such a thing as a gift. And these cost karma. So people who critique a lot and have karma uh, they can give these little gifts, and they're goofy little things, um, but a lot of people really love them. Um, it's my habit to give people a gift at the end of each. Um, if they critique my whole chapter, it's common for me to give people a gift. Let's see, Reg is last. I gave him this this one, which is an inside joke for the novel that he just uh, finished. So you can kind of tailor them to a person and make them kind of fun. Um, the profile page also has your most recent work. And so, so here's the um, A Boy and His Dog, the, the one that's going to be published soon. Um, and then this is my little horror story. And even though it's, out of spotlight and I only paid karma once for it. It's in the good critiquer spotlight uh, for 24 hours. And so you can see a whole bunch of people still want to read it. And I have two people who have critiques in the works right now. So 27 critiques and more coming for only one payment of karma is pretty good. Um, the profile picture you can change easily by clicking the menu. You, you just uh, edit the profile and update whatever picture you want. You can turn off night mode if you prefer it white instead of black. Um, you can check your karma stash. This actually already shows your karma. Um, I have enough karma to post 16 novels right now. And that's, you know, it just adds up faster than you think if you do a couple, three a day. So I, I find it a very workable pace for me. But of course, I don't have little kids and I am retired. Um, so that that makes it easier. Um, so this is how you can go to your old uh, stories and, and look. Um, you can look at reader stats. So here is, you know, how fast I got critiques from a boy and his dog in reads. And it also will show the breakdown of male, female, age, blah, blah. Um, and you can get an idea for how many people continued to read through the whole thing of your novel. The 122 was a blurb I did in main spotlight. So that was for all comers. Um, so that's why the views were so high here. But, you know, it's, it's there's some fall off for who does the whole thing, but actually you can get a lot of uh, good critiquers who go through the whole novel in, in short order. Um, to post work, you click post a work for critique and it tells you the rules right there. Bait is free, uh, main spotlight is five karma points. And you can say whether if it's, if you want to, uh, click it's part of a novel it'll show you your last one and automatically pull up to the next chapter so we'll pretend that we're doing this um, here and then we can pick what it goes into we can say if it has adult content and you're the judge of that sex scenes yes 
bad language, yes. Graphic gore, yes. And maybe triggering things um, should probably get an adult tag. And I haven't found that it keeps people from reading. If you click this, it'll automatically go into whatever contests there are. Um, so I'd read the rules of the contest before I clicked that. And then here's how you can restrict your work if you don't want drive-bys. You can put it to certain groups that you're a member of and, and check and uncheck those. And then everyone in that group can look at it. Or you can restrict the visibility to only certain people who are in your, your core group. And this will discourage that as well. And then here is where you choose the spotlight, the main spotlight, three crits, and you have to wait. Personal, six crits, no wait. Beta, it's free, but there's no wait. And then so to post your writing, you um, just put whatever you want in there. This is um, a blog post. You put that in. And then if you do extras, you can put critique guidance to say, does this sound stupid? You know, uh, is this too melodramatic or whatever you're concerned about? Um, and then here's where you could do the bonuses as well. And if you do 100 point ratings, it makes these really horrible red slide bars that everyone hates. And I don't think people are honest with. So I would encourage people not to do that. So now if we um, chose to put this, it would post as a new chapter and cost me five karma points. We're not going to do this, actually. Um, but that's that's how easy it is to post. So it, it doesn't take very long um, to to post work. You just paste it in, tweak a little bit if you need, and away you go. At the very bottom of Scribblefile, they have a quote of the day or an interesting writer fact of the day. And this can be um, works people have done or their last words or any number of, of things. They have uh, a way that, that you can contact folks and they are really, really responsive uh, in terms of customer service. They have a bunch of uh, frequently asked questions and a lot of them, uh, a lot of what you might want to contact them are actually covered. They have codes of conduct so that you know how to Hey, if, if that was ever an issue. Um, and you can gift other people membership if you want. And here's where you would go from basic to free if that was what you wanted. And then this is kind of a cool thing that they have too. Um, they just out of the goodness of their heart have a whole bunch of old books that are now out of copyright that you can just get for free. They have 49 pages of them. And if you, there's something else that you want to read, they'll, they'll let you do that as well. And it has occurred to me that if I ever had nothing to do, that I could get one of these and do an audiobook or one of these. Um, I don't know that I ever will, but, but it's really, really interesting. And I am going back now to read some of these that I don't have and haven't to try to broaden my uh, horizons as well for some of the classic literature and, and things that maybe aren't so classic but still sound. So that's one other thing that's that's been um, fun about, uh, about Scribblefile. If you um, look at the groups, let's just look at humor and humor. Um, you can see the members if you can choose to get updates. I try to unupdate every bit I can so my feed stays less uh, clogged. But if you click view the group forum, then you can see all the different threads there are and you can see which ones have something new. And it's pretty apparent that I never click the contest one because I don't enter humor contests out off the sites but but that that's a it makes it fast to quick bop into a group and see if there's anything new and then move on um, so that you don't get bogged down and 
and sucked in. So um, I think I'll stop there in case people have questions, but it's it's been a lot of fun for me um, uh, to read all kinds of stuff that I might not have been exposed to otherwise. It's been tremendous to up my game in terms of my own writing uh, strength, as well as my sense of identity. I had been afraid at first that maybe exposure to other writers would make me um, doubt my own or or that it would weaken my voice um, and make me kind of subconsciously be a copycat for everybody else. But that hasn't been the case at all. Um, and I've been grateful for that. Um, but it's it's been a really fun and very um, fruitful way to collaborate for me. I have now 21 pre-orders for my book that's about to come out. And that's predominantly, I believe, from Scribophile as opposed to my newsletter crowd, although I don't know that for sure. Um, and I, these are people who will leave reviews uh, for my stories uh, on Goodreads and Amazon both. Um, these are people who will listen to my audiobooks as well. And so it's been a very valuable kind of multi-use tool for me. And um, I, I would encourage people to check it out unless you're so completely swamped for time that you, that you just aren't able to do uh, a couple of critiques a day. Actually, maybe let's just take a second and do a fake critique so you can see how that works. Let's see, go back to home. Let's see here. We'll look at Steve's story here. Okay, so. You would just click write a critique. I like the inline critiques. I think they're the most valuable. And so here you would say, you know, if you didn't like this, you would say blah, blah, blah. And then down here you would say, this is silly. Or what are you thinking? Um, this little bit of crap is enough that I could do a set snag and save if I wanted and go back later. Um, and then, of course, you have to <laughs> you have to take out the gibberish or you won't get anybody's. And then at the very end of whatever, you have a chance to put some closing comments. And then this is the tricky thing. Once you're done with it, you have to click I wrote a critique to get karma. If you just if all you do is say, oh, my gosh, this is the most wonderful thing and there's nothing constructive, you have to click it's a comment, but you don't get any karma for that. So make sure you have some actual suggestions click critique to get your karma and then you just hit submit critique we will just hit save draft and i'll do this later today um, to get to steve's new new uh chapter okay i think i'll stop there i uh, hope i didn't I, rush through too fast yeah i wouldn't submit that steve might think you're on the bottle again there Diana. yeah he might he might <laughs> um there are a couple questions um mm -hmm. first first one um pretty interesting are you able to put images in the writing um or you illustrations can. and figures yes okay. yes you can and i don't know anyone if i knew someone who did that for sure i'd pull up an example i've never okay. tried it but but you have to you have to have the image hosted off site and then you actually Actually, I lied. Let me let me go back. Um, Reg Reg does this for his chapters. Um, let's just pull up a random this thing. So here he has put this picture of a guy with trees growing out of his ears um here and is, is that the, something that's fairly easy to include in the text or is that something you have to do extra do you know it's it's you you can only do it if you're on premium okay and you can uh and you have to have the image hosted elsewhere and link to it which is why i you know i'm just not uh great at all this this here high tech stuff and okay. so I've not fooled with it, but but um, 
but it's there are people who do things as big as this, you know, in in color or things with diagrams. See here, he's got a table in there, mm-hmm. um, so it's it's possible to do that, but you have to have premium, and I've never fooled with it. Okay, that's cool. And then also, are you able to find people or groups by genre, or are you able Absolutely. to? Are you Absolutely. able to okay cool and you're able to tag your work by genre as well oh yeah okay. so so if you were going to search groups this is just the newest ones you know the ones that, that have just formed but okay. you can say okay show me let's look okay let's show me erotica and then you can look for the erotica groups and here you are john um, john tur- turn away from the screen there you go. But here's a dark romance one. Here's sex cells. Here's a male male one. Here's typey type ladies. And some of them are not welcoming like this one. Go away. But the truth is, I'd rather um, have it go away right at the, uh, you know, at the start rather than get my hopes up. Here's one that does specifically transgressive ones. So if we want to go um, with kids. We can look and see what kids things there are. Here's some specifically for middle grade, uh, young adult, picture books, kids short stories. And, um, you know, so you can you can tailor what you want. And then when you when you post work. Then it's it's in those groups if you choose. So like, well, interface, I didn't put it anywhere, but a boy and his dog. Let's see if it'll even say. So a boy and this is dog, the groups this is posted in is this romance group, this private group of my buddies, and the humor group. Hmm. And, you know, it's easy to put them in more. And, and there will be some people who have their, you know, 50 different groups that have, that they've posted in. So, it, yeah, if somebody was to start, I, I know there was another comment about how much time it looks like it takes if somebody were to start this because there's the element of doing work in order to be able to then post your own stuff Mm -hmm. where's the safe place for somebody to start like you're in the romance you know say somebody's a thriller writer or maybe they're a a sci-fi writer do they just dive into a group and say here i am i want to review everybody's stuff or how do you go about starting where where do you get your feet wet all right what i would do would be um Okay, so let's just pick a group. You can you can do either. You can start in a group. So let's um, here's the thriller group. Funny that you say that. So now in the thriller group, you can see there's 600 members. Here's the the kingpin of it, and here um, you could see all the recent postings. So he posted this one which is a radio script actually i have that one flagged to read that looks interesting um so so you would you would suggest somebody to start in a really big group and just like just start reviewing stuff and 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 yes and and viewing how you know what is the etiquette within the the group yeah okay if if you are really narrow in your taste this is the thing to do and and this guy here is an award-winning dude who writes international thrillers um and you can see he spams his thing into every group there is but but he will post a lot of chapters um again and again and again um okay. so if you if you have certain things you really only want to do children's you'd only want to do memoir or whatever then start in the group if you are more flexible and uncertain then i would suggest you start in the main spotlight but not novels I would suggest you skip those, but go with the short stories. I think short stories are the best start. Um, and you can look at a glance, bad language and horror. Okay. You know, yes or no. You can, you can also decide, um, you know, how much time you want to spend just like this. So LN story here is only 1600 words in science fiction. The other thing is the people in the good critiquer spotlight, they know it's a bonus, a freebie. I mean, they did work for it, but it's not the same as spending karma again. And so these people are going to be more mellow, probably. 
about having someone critique. So a brand new nervous person can probably do well just by picking something in the good critiquer spotlight, especially it's short. I think that's why I have so many critiques on mine. Well, partly people know that I'm mellow and don't get upset, but partly it's short. And so, you know, why, why do a 4,000 word chapter if you can do 1,300 words? So start with short stories and good critiquer spotlight. And, and um, that's a nice way to start. That's what I found very valuable for me. And you can see it's a variety. Um, the short stories can still be science fiction or horror or thriller or literary or kids. You know, you can see all kinds. And this changes, this changes day to day. Um, so that's what I have been, that's what I found easy. And, and you can also add a single, it's kind of like the look inside with Amazon. I don't know Maria here. I don't know this person, but you know what it's about at a glance. And then you can read just like the look inside of Amazon and read the first paragraph and see, is this decent writing? Is this worth your time? You know, will you enjoy it? And I only critique things I enjoy um, if, if it's too ponderous or it, it's just not my thing. I just go on to something else because there's an unlimited amount of things to, to critique. But actually early on, if there's something, um, if there's something that, that is maybe not ideally perfectly written, you can learn a lot with that too. Why do I hate this? Oh, it's because they, they beat the drum so hard. They go on and on or why do I love this so much? You know, so it's really, really good for that. But short stories is a good place to start, I think. Okay, cool. Cool. Does anybody have any other questions for Diana? Um, feel free to put them in the chat if you want. Um, Diana, thank you so much for the time that you put into this and oh, yeah, showing, showing us this thing. I, I know it's it can be um, a little wild uh, to see a, basically it's a really nice online social media critique platform. It's really cool. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Otherwise, we might break for the day. Going once, going twice. All right, Diana, thank you so much for taking the time today. We really appreciate all the work. Absolutely. And I'll go ahead and uh, stop the recording.